Happy Thursday, Jim Army. Today's class, I'm going to break down an at-home legs training workout for you now. With uh, so many gyms being closed and people can't get into uh, squat racks or being able to uh, lift heavy deads. How do you train legs at home and still get a good workout on the quads and the hamstrings, etc.? Well, that's what we're going to break down today. So... This is a free workout at jimstepani.com. It's my at-home equipment free leg workout. And this is part of a series, so there'll be other muscle groups coming along like chest and back, how to do, uh, you know, train these muscle groups with no equipment whatsoever or with some very easy to find home equipment like a backpack, which I'll be using uh, a little bit today, but you don't really have to. Uh, you can still do this without any weight at all. So if you go to jimstepani.com and uh, you'll notice on the link uh, with, with today's live that I've also got up my body weight push pull leg circuit for you. This is just another free uh, at home workout that you guys can do making it available for you guys while you're all stuck training uh, at home. I know I have access to my personal gym here which is amazing. But what I'm doing is taking the time that I have now to uh, broadcast to you all these tips for you guys who are, are training at home. So today let's get right into this workout. And I'm going to demonstrate what I can. Clearly, uh, I'm still recovering. I'm in the 11th week following surgery. For those of you who don't know, know what happened to my leg, I severed this uh, quadriceps on Christmas Eve, had it reattached basically uh, New Year's Eve. I am healing now in the 11th week, and uh, three years prior, I basically did the same thing on the right side uh, to that quadricep, but different. Uh, this was done squatting, this was done uh, jumping on takeoff. So I'll demonstrate what I can, but what we're going to do is we'll break this workout down right for you here. We'll talk about our warm-up, doing some lunges and uh, kettlebell swings, or in this case, a backpack swing. Now, before you get into this warm-up that we're going to be doing uh, here, as you see, we're going to be starting with uh, lunges uh, and, uh, and, and kettlebell swings. So uh, let's see. Here is the actual breakdown uh, of the workout right here. So we're going to start with the body weight lunge and the kettlebell swing. Those are going to be our workout uh, warm-up, if you will, or our specific warm up for the legs. Like I said, I recommend doing some general warm up, either a stationary bike, uh, running, walking, uh, jumping jacks, what have you, just to get the, the general the body uh, temperature uh, increase before you start doing these more specific uh, warm up. So we'll get into the body weight lunge and it's just a simple and again, you know, my form. So let me uh, bring up a photo at least of one of a lunge for you guys. And this is a reverse or, you know, they both look the same pretty much in the, in the bottom position. So, um, but basically we're going to be doing here is a forward lunge. So very carefully for me, we're going to step forward and come down. Uh, remember keeping that heel over the toes, not allowing it to track too far forward. And then I would be going down much lower and keeping my grip center of gravity back more and then back up. And then we're going to just alternate legs. So we're going to do 20 alternating legs, just using your body weight. You could, if you want to add extra resistance right now, but again, this is just the warm up portion. You can also add weight and do your lunges with the backpack on. So that'll be our first exercise, 20 uh, lunges, alternating legs, okay? And then we're gonna get into the kettlebell swing. So here, what you're gonna do is, and, and I'm recommending very little rest in between sets and in between all exercises here. So as soon as you're done with your lunges, you're not gonna be talking at the folks at home on the live, you're gonna go right into your kettlebell swing. So we're gonna get out our timer here. 
and go for 60 seconds. And now, again, I'm pretty limited, uh, so don't, don't try to mimic my form too much here, but basically same rules apply as a normal kettlebell swing here. I'm just using a loaded uh, backpack. This is about 30 pounds of weight, so similar to a 30 pound kettlebell. Even the handle is kind of similar to a kettlebell. The difference is it's a bit longer, okay? So what happens is, is you gotta be careful if you're short here, uh, dragging as you come back, okay? And the other issue is that the weight tends to sit in the bottom and then as you come up, the weight sort of falls forward and you get this uh, shifting of the weight inside the bag, which gets kind of awkward as you're doing your swings, but you get the you get the basic picture. So I've got books in here and then I stuff it with clothes and whatnot so that the weight is not shifting it around as much. So we would set our timer. There it is, 60 seconds. I talked during most of it, but I, I've got a good excuse actually. So all right, so we're done. We're done with our our warm-up, right? We've done our kettlebell swings. Now we are immediately going to go again right into our jump squats. And so this is basically the power portion of our workout. So we did our warm-up lunges and swings. Then we're going to get up to the power movement, the jump squats. So now that our body are, is warmed, we want to use the fast twitch muscle fibers, okay? So we're doing the jump squats while those fast twitch muscle fibers are fresh and they're not fatigued. Once the fast twitch muscle fibers get fatigued, you're no longer developing power, okay? So there's no point in training with explosive reps. So at the very start, we're gonna do five to 10. And again, I really can't demonstrate this uh, yet. I'm not, I'm not able to do uh, everything yet with the leg, but we're gonna do five to 10 jump squats. Now here is the one time that I'm suggesting you give yourself a little bit of rest, okay? Because we're training our fast twitch muscle fiber. So in between here, I'd give yourself at least a minute or two minutes of breathing time in between your jump squats. You could pace around uh, or whatnot, uh, or do something for upper body if you wanna kill time. Uh, not just uh, sit around resting if you're somebody who likes to move and then get right back into it. So we're not trying to fatigue them to a point. We are, we are a bit. We're, remember, we don't, have, we don't have 45 pound plates that we can throw on a barbell at home, at least most of us, uh, and start squatting and doing a deadlift to put some real overload in the legs. So the key to this workout is sort of pre-exhausting the legs so that when we're using either body weight or adding light weight, it is still a, a challenge for our legs, even if we're able to squat uh, 405. This is gonna be a whole new challenge, uh, even for those who, who, are, who are heavy squatters. So we're getting right into the jump squats, three sets, five to 10. Again, the point is to develop more power in the legs and also a bit to sort of pre-exhaust those faster muscle fibers, get them a bit fatigued, which we're gonna then do even more so uh, with this pre-exhaust superset next up. So let's pretend I've already done my three sets of jump squats because I'm not really jumping. Uh, and now we're gonna move into our pre-exhaust superset. So this is gonna be wall sits supersetted with step ups. Now, for my step up, since I'm here in, uh, in my gym, I've got a, obviously I've got a step here that I can use. But if you're at home and don't have a box or something, what could you be using? What would be around 18 to 20 inches in height at home? A chair, right? So if you have a sturdy chair, you could be using a chair, you could use a, a coffee table, at least a sturdy uh, coffee table. Actually, I, here I have a rogue coffee table, which is a metal coffee table, so you can actually do your step ups on that one. That, that coffee table will hold. So, But be uh, creative in what you have around the house. 
that is somewhere around 18 to 20 inches to allow you to do your step up. So what we're going to do is we're now going to pre-exhaust the good old wall sits, okay? Because again, like I said, we don't have all the 45s, okay? Yeah, I do, but the gyms are closed. So you guys don't have access to them. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna try to exhaust those quads. So we're gonna do a good old wall sit. And so what you wanna do is, and again, I'm kind of limited here uh, with this leg, but it is getting better. Look at that. You wanna come down so that the legs are at least parallel uh, with, the, with the floor, okay? And then you're gonna hold that for as long as you can, okay? Now, you can also add, bear with me as I'm trying to do this, you can add resistance here by putting the backpack or a case of bottled water, whatever you have lying around the house to make it a bit harder so that you fatigue sooner, okay? So then, boom, I'm fatigued, quads are fired are dead, just burnt, okay? Now I'm gonna immediately go right over here and do my step. You can either use body weight, or you can use the backpack just by wearing it or even holding something and then we're gonna do our step ups. Now you gotta be very careful here, okay? Even on the way down and then obviously we're going to be alternating and then you're immediately going to finish there, go right back to the wall sits here and you're going to continue in this fashion. Take that wall sit to failure, right back into your step ups. Trust me guys, with with this pre-exhaust fatiguing set here, this super set, the step ups, like I said, even, even if you're a 405 squatter, you're basically doing a one-legged squat here, right? That's what the step up is. Look at this, right? This would be the down position of the squat, right? Leg is about parallel, and then this is the finished position of the squat, right? So we're just basically squatting with one leg, but we've pre-exhausted with the wall sits. Who's, who's ever pre-exhausted uh, on squats with leg extensions and then tried to squat? It's, it's absolutely brutal. So this may not look like much of a challenge, but until you actually try this workout, like I said, even if you're used to squatting heavy weight, with that pre-exhaust going, this is gonna be a challenge. And you can add extra body weight. So we're gonna do that three sets. The pre-exhaust super set uh, with the step up in the wall sit. Okay, now we're gonna get into, get the phone back out, into uh, Tabata. Not a typical, what we're thinking, I mean, you think of Tabata as high intense interval training, which this is, but we're using this to train squats with, right? So now the legs are already fatigued from that pre-exhaust superset. So now we're getting into Tabata squats, basically using just body weight squats, or you can use the backpack. Now, the key here is these aren't just body weight squats, okay? Who knows what Tabatas are out there, right? They are brutal, okay? What is it? It's 20, Second sets with 10 second rest periods done for eight intervals. That's a total of four minutes. So you're gonna be squatting for four minutes, pretty much straight through. It's only 10 seconds. Uh, you get little 10 second rest periods in between. So after you have pre-exhausted those legs, like I said, with the wall, squits and wall, wall sits and the step ups, doing these Tabatas, even with body weight, is gonna be a challenge for a lot of people. So, try it the first time with just your body weight. And remember, you can get an easy Tabata app. I use the Gym Boss uh, app on my phone to do my Tabata. So I'm gonna hit the Tabata 
and uh, uh, well, I won't wear the, I can barely do a full squat, but you get the point, okay? For most of you, try the, try the backpack, but you're gonna go 20 seconds, body weight squat, and you guys should be impressed with the fact that I can actually do almost a full body weight squat with this leg. So you're gonna do this, so you're going to be going a bit faster than I am for 20 seconds. Timer beeps. I now have 10 seconds of rest. Beep goes off and I'm back into my squats, okay? 20 more seconds. seconds. Back into squats for 20 seconds. So you're basically doing eight rounds of that, okay? So I'm not going to do that clearly, but you get the, you get the picture. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be brutal. Absolutely uh, brutal. So on to uh, so let's say we finished our Tabatas, so we'll fast forward those uh, four minutes. And now we're going to get into alternating exhaust with one leg and bridges. And so what you're going to do here is actually, <laughs> Matt, you did ask if I needed a mat, you're right. Let me grab a mat here. And so we're basically going to do some one-legged bridges. And here I'll use this box as well if you want to add some resistance. Now, with the bridge, if you find that doing the one-leg, so with the one-leg, you're going to keep this non-working leg straight. And then what you're going to do is you don't want to come too high. The higher you go, the easier it is. You want to have more than a 90-degree bend and the knee to really get, it's a small range of motion here to get those glutes really fired, okay? So try a, a wider or, or a longer stance and coming all the way in, this is much easier. But if that's too hard for you to come out here, then bring it in as you can. So you're gonna keep this leg straight out, come up. Now, if that's a problem holding that leg, you can get something shorter than this one to balance it on and hold it up. Or if you find that doing the one leg version is just too hard for you, you can't do all 10 reps as we have there, then you're gonna just use both legs at the same time. Now, the other thing you can do is do your step ups with the heels up. Uh, I mean, your uh, bridges with the heels up on a box like I did for the step ups here and try this version or a one legged version for added resistance. So we're going to go back and forth alternating like I said until we have all, all reps done uh, for uh, both. both uh, So one-legged leg bridge, you're going to take each one the failure back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So as many as you can. And then we're going to end with a burnout to failure of an exercise that I call lunge around the clock. And basically, it's, very, it's a very simple exercise. And again, you guys can figure out. It's a forward lunge. I can't do a full lunge. You're going to do a forward lunge, right? Come back. Then you're going to immediately go into a side lunge and back, and then into a reverse lunge again, mind the leg, and back. Then you're gonna alternate and do the same thing on the left leg, forward, side lunge, reverse lunge, and then back to the right. You're gonna keep alternating that way 
basically until you've destroyed your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. So guys, that's my at-home leg workout. Again, start with a general warm-up. Get your uh, body temperature up. Then you're gonna get into the body weight lunge. Uh, alternating legs as a more specific warm up. Then right into 60 seconds of kettlebell swings using a backpack if you don't have a kettlebell uh, at home. Then we're gonna go right into jump squats to develop some power and then exhaust those fast twitch muscle fibers. Then we get into the wall sit, this pre-exhaust superset with the step up. And again, you can wear that backpack for added resistance if you need it on the step up. Then we're gonna get into the Tabatas, Tabata squats, again, body weight or backpack. Then into the one-legged bridge, alternating legs, each one to failure. And finally, we're gonna burn it out with the lunge around the clock. So, trust me guys, even if you love going in and squatting heavy, try this workout while you're at home and you won't believe uh, the, the pump in the legs, the quad and the hamstring and glute burn if you do these exercises correctly, focusing on each rep properly. So focus on those reps, focus on contracting uh, the target muscle fibers and you will get results because we're changing it up, right? You probably go in almost every leg day and start with squats or you start with the leg press or whatever it is, right? Well, guess what? You no longer have access to that. I get it, that sucks, but the good news is, is no longer having access to what you were doing is massive change in what do I always say? Change is good. So having this change, even though it seems like these workouts are sort of a plan B and maybe not quite as good, in the moment, you can actually get amazing results because we have such a radical change in the way that we're training. As long as you keep that intensity up, and I'm showing you how to do that with all these techniques, the pre-exhaust and whatnot. So guys, don't get depressed that your gym is closed. I've got the answers for you, and these are free. These are free, even though gymsupani.com is mainly a member's website for the workouts and whatnot. All these body weight and the band workouts as well. This, the push-pull circuit I have, these are all free uh, so that you guys have access uh, to ways and solutions for training while you're all stuck at home and not even have access to the gym. So. That is, uh, not, that's not my push pull. That is my at home equipment free leg workout. Give it a try and let me know how you like it and what alterations you had to make at home. What did you use for a step? Did you use a backpack for the kettlebell or did you use something else? Share it at the Gym Army Facebook uh, group page. We just posted where uh, on, my, on my Instagram. Uh, or uh, my Twitter as well. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm hoping that this is helping you guys not lose your gains while you're stuck at home. All right, I'll see you soon with another how to train at home workout, probably chest. All right, see you guys soon.